Hello and welcome to this short tutorial of Skybox Painter. First I will explain the toolset to you and then I will tell you some special tips for the program. Okay, first of all we got a gradient tool which is here to um, define your background. Then we have a brush tool, a line tool, a sun tool, a random generator, the atmosphere tool, a layer mask, a selection tool and of course a tool to save your work. Okay, now to the gradient tool. Also, the movement just works like in any first person game. You can use the arrow keys to rotate yourself and look at every corner of your sky. Here we have some different settings. The first one is the number of the keys, meaning those uh, slider things you can see in the background. So you can slide them across the sky and set the color for each of them. The second setting is the resolution, meaning the number of pixel steps your gradient has. So if you set this to a really low level, you can create your own pixel art style skies. If you set this value to 1, then the bottom slider will define the color of your entire sky, which might be pretty useful in some cases. For the sky we are drawing in this tutorial, I will just quickly randomize the colors. So now let's go to the brush tool. Most of the settings here should explain themselves, but I will still go through all of them. You can choose a texture for your brush, then there is an option for the size and one option for the aspect ratio, which is the rate between the width and the height of your brush. Then you can set the rotation, that can also be changed using the scroll wheel of your mouse, and you have an option for the draw frequency, meaning the time step your brushes are set with. As you can see, if you set this to a low value, then the clouds will be rather close to each other, while when you set it to a high value, then the distance will be higher. Next we have the option to use the perspective rescaling algorithm. That you might understand best if you just look at what it does. Enabling this option, objects that are close to the horizon will get smaller and flatter. This option was built into the program to give your skies a sense of perspective. It makes the sky seem to have a lot more depth than it actually has. Also we have a random rotate option, which will randomly rotate your brushes as long as you keep the button pressed. What the receive sunlight button does will be explained when we come to the sun tool. Now let's get to the line tool, which is a pretty funny tool to use and also has a lot of options. You can adjust the size, meaning the width of your line, and there is one thing called the drawing threshold, which is the distance between points of the line. So if you set this to a lower level, your lines will not have so many edges. But the hand shattering will also be more visible then. As you can see, you can still edit a line after you have drawn it, or deselect it if you don't want to edit it any longer. Also, you can change the texture of your line, and you have control over the tiling and the stretch factor, which will influence the distribution of the texture across your line. If you disable the single click option, you can draw straight lines. A new point will be added to your line every time you click, and if you right click, the line will end. Using the two buttons on the right, you can set a start color and an end color for your line, which can look somehow like this. For the sun tool, you have a single instance of a sun that can be dragged across the sky. Also, you can change the textures and some other things here. But what is really cool about the sun tool can be seen better if you use the random generator first. I think the random generator can be understood best if you just use one of the presets and hit apply. As you can see now there are a lot of clouds in between the two lines in the background. Also it is really useful to give each random distribution an own layer so that you can sort them. For example stars belong in the background, so let's use the preset here. You should play with this tool a lot and make some small adjustments to see what looks best. In this case I want the stars a bit bigger. Now that we've used the random generator with the receive sunlight toggle enabled, we can go back to the sun tool to see what this actually does. Now we can see that the clouds react to the position of the sun. This effect works with a mask on top of the cloud that always faces towards the sun. And for this mask you can define two colors. You can define the color of the light, of course, and you can define the color of the shadowed side of the mask, to give you a maximum customizability. Here is a short diagram to give you an idea about what this feature actually Now let's get to the next tool, the Atmosphere tool. 
This tool gives you the control about a horizontal line that surrounds you, which can be seen as the atmosphere. The options should be pretty simple to understand, but a good tip for this tool is to never give the color a too high opacity. The layer mask tool should also be a tool that is pretty simple to understand for digital design artists, as it can be used to mask out objects on a layer. The mask layer can be selected on the right. With this tool you can mask out stars in front of your sun, where of course they shouldn't be. The last tool that can be used is the selection tool. This tool allows you to manipulate basically every object you've already placed in your scene. You can delete objects, duplicate them, rotate them, move them, and you can change their colors. You can select the objects using these little buttons, and if you want the buttons to disappear again, you can simply switch to another tool. Some of you might be interested in how to draw a rainbow now, so I'll also explain that. First of all, we need to go to the line tool, of course. Then we need to select the rainbow texture, and one important thing is that the color needs to be set to white. Also, you should disable single click, and then you can draw the rainbow. I'm sure with some patience you can draw a better one than I can. Also, you can change the opacity and the width of the rainbow now. Now that we are done, the most important thing is of course to save your work. But before we do so, we should also check out what the explore button does. If you go to explore mode, you can see your sky in a real-world environment. There are three different places you can visit with your sky. One is the abstract world, one is your house, and one is the beach. Now that we are happy with our work, we can actually save it. Just enter a file name and select which type of export you want. There is the Equirectangular export, which means a panoramic image, and you can export a cube map, meaning six images for the sides of a cube. Also set the resolution and then hit the save button. This might take some while for a high resolution. Finally the rendering is done. You can find the files now if you go to the program folder and from there to the data folder. Here you will find samples. In there there is a new folder now with the name of your sky. Inside this little folder you will find your images the panoramic image and the six cube map images. Also, if you go back to the data folder, you can find this folder called import textures. Inside there you will find all the textures you can use in the program. Also the textures are sorted, so if you want to import own textures, you can do it if you just drag a file in here. If you don't know how to find the program folder, it will be somewhere inside your Steam apps hierarchy. You can find information about this on the internet. In the manual you can find more information about importing textures into the program and also about all the other tools in Skybox Painter 3D. I hope you learned something and now have a lot of fun with the program. Maybe soon you'll find yourself beneath a new sky.